Hey, welcome back everybody. It has become clear that current age Marvel comics does not like people to have healthy relationships at all. They just don't seem to like it. Now, last week I covered how Marvel was planning to have Mary Jane skinned alive and worn like a skin suit by Moira Terminator. And now we have, well, here's the thing, they have rebooted or, re, I should say, yeah, they've rebooted Spider, Amazing Spider-Man yet again. And they've gone about and made some changes to pretty much destroy what was there before. Now, let me get into it. This is an article from CBR. A startling revelation at the end of Marvel's The Amazing Spider-Man number one reveals that Peter and MJ's relationship just became a lot more complicated. Peter Parker's relationship problems are taking a turn for the worse as the end of Marvel's The Amazing Spider-Man number one reveals that Mary Jane has two children and appears to be romantically involved with another person. The Amazing Spider-Man number one finds Peter struggling to put his life together after he's cast out by some of his closest friends and allies. Now, let me just say, I'm not going to read this comic. I really have no interest whatsoever in reading this comic. I did many times I stopped reading Marvel and DC Comics once in a while. I might take a peep at something just so I could review it, but I have no interest in reading this whatsoever. Now, previously I talked about how it was set up at, I thought it was going to be in the um, other Spider-Man thing, but apparently it's in this one, where you find Peter in some crater and there's this big hole, some explosion that happened and there's this question, what has he done or something like that? Well, apparently this is connected to that in some way, right? It, this, the amazing, this amazing Spider-Man number one takes place six months after that. And for some reason, they've turned, they've turned Peter Parker slash Spider-Man into an asshole. That's pretty much it. They turned him into some kind of asshole. He's on out with everybody. Even um, Aunt May, who normally always has his back, she and all has a problem with him, and she doesn't, she, she can't trust him or anything like that. They never explain why or what it is is going on. Again, this is what I've picked up. I haven't read the comic. I'm not going to read the comic. Okay? But I'm just going to get into what I want to deal with here. Now, here's the... Let me continue on. The exact reasoning as to why Peter is suddenly turned away by everyone hasn't yet been fully revealed. But the issue does allude to the fact that Peter and MJ have broken up. They, they set it up like some kind of mystery as to... Like, I did skip ahead six months, so we don't know what happened. You don't know what happens or what's going to happen, but they try to set up as some kind of mystery, kind of nonsense. Now. At the end of The Amazing Spider-Man number one, Peter stands outside MJ's apartment, but decides, not to em but decides not to enter. MJ secretly watches from above before she turns her attention to someone named Paul and two children one of whom bears a striking resemblance to MJ, who call her mommy. Now, here is the first image, right? You see, it's just Peter Parker outside there. He walks away. She's watching. Then, ding, ding, ding. In comes Paul. And here comes the two children. The little girl has red hair and looks like her. Running mommy and all that. Now, keep in mind, this is six months after they could very well end up retconning the hell out of it or you know i, I highly doubt in six months time she have two children this old you understand i mean six months that would mean she had to be stepping out on him on peter for a long time in order for that to happen you know so she might be the demand have some this is his children from a previous marriage, and, and maybe she's married him, and now she's they call she's like the stepchildren, something like that, and they call her mommy. It's possible, right? 
earlier in the amazing spider-man number one peter calls mj on the phone but before i do that let me get back to this this art doesn't look good at all it really doesn't look good at all they also have these very large heads and the, 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 the whole facial expressions and things don't look very natural and don't look very good children kind of look off to be honest with you it's not it's not not really good art at all right peter calls mg on his phone after mulling it over for a time mj ducks into a corner to take the call and but tells peter that he's got to stop this and that he shouldn't call her again before she hangs up the exact nature of paul and mg's relationship and when the children came about remains to be seen in future amazing spider-man issues but you know I, i'm not going to get into all of that let me just say i said it before that they don't seem to like marvel doesn't seem to like anybody to have good positive relationships anymore and in my view i think there are three main reasons for that now i'm just saying these these are these, these three main reasons are what i think i'm not saying that this is exactly it but i just think this is really the reason for it reason number one i think there is this belief in not just marvel but also dc that heroes cannot have good healthy relationships heroes cannot have peace they must suffer in order to be heroes there is this belief that they must suffer in order to be heroes they can't overcome something and strive forward they must always keep having to overcome overcome and every time every time they overcome something something else comes along and pushes them back down and they have to overcome that it, it, it gets ridiculous to be perfectly honest with you really really ridiculous because you know what you're doing when you do these things you know exactly what you're setting in motion when you decide okay i am going to change this to look like this you know what you're setting in motion when you do it now if you take your heroes and decide well the only way that they have any legitimacy is to make them suffer this thoughts and actions like that when you see these things in comics make me very concerned for what they're going to do going forward especially with a superhero team like the fantastic four because the fantastic four are the first family of marvel right they are a family basically yes they had the ups and downs here and there sue and and reed are married johnny and the thing have their own relationships come and come and go and all this kind of stuff and then you know sue and reed had their children and all this kind of stuff but with current day marvel thinking it makes me worried about what they what they may do not only in comics but more so in the mcu with the fantastic four going forward because there is this belief that their heroes must suffer that's reason number one reason number two it's a self-insert i don't think a lot of these writers have had very happy childhoods they probably grew up in broken homes where one or more parents have gotten where where their parents have gotten divorced parents had to leave whatever so they project that into these stories and when they project these things into these stories they try to craft it like this is how it's supposed to be they're always supposed to be some stumbling block there was supposed to be any any happily ever after nothing like that and they go on and reason number three i think this one is the most important one the other two are, are important but this one is well, when this this is what happens when you don't understand the character that you're writing you don't understand the character that that you're writing now for a character like punisher you won't really expect him to settle down and have um you know family life kind of thing because punisher lost his wife and children and that's what set him down that road 
Spider-Man, when Spider-Man first came out, first started, like, yeah, you're a bit of an asshole. Okay, you're a bit of an asshole, a little cocky, all sorts of things. Okay. But he overcame that. He progressed. He moved forward. He, 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 he and Mary Jane have a dynamic that would really and truly work. But as I said in my previous video I did, Marvel does not seem to want them to be happy ever. Ever. They don't want them to be happy. They have this belief that, 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 that when it comes to Peter Parker and Mary Jane, they must suffer. They must never get together. They, they've, tried, they've tried to push him and Black Cat getting together. That doesn't work. But again, you don't understand your character. This is what you do. I, I for one, think Spider-Man and Mary J getting together would be really good. They've done it before. They did the whole future, they did the whole future thing where they, had, um, they, um, where they had their daughter, May, and she became Spider-Girl Spider also. So they did that. But you can't seem to want to move forward with it here because you keep finding roadblocks to throw in. Why? You don't understand your character. I think if, if Peter, and, uh, Peter and MJ get together, it would be a good, solid relationship that, that they could build on. She could be a rock for Spider-Man. She could help him out. She could be there. That is, that, that, that is what I would consider female empowerment. Not trying to say, well, okay, let's slip, her, let's slip a, 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 a gender bent version of the character into this. No, that doesn't work. You don't understand the character that you are writing, and this is why you've done it. You turned, you turned Spider-Man into basically an asshole in this new amazing Spider-Man number one. You set up some sort of mystery story that nobody is interested in. You've gone a step further and put Spider-Man and MJ at odds, completely at odds now. And you've given MJ a, a whole new family and some new man that she's with to completely kick them in the nuts. Why? Because you all don't like anybody to be happy in your stories they must suffer in order for you to feel some vindication and keep doing this again it's not exclusive to just marvel you see it in dc but this is what marvel is doing they don't like their heroes to be happy they don't understand their heroes and they keep pushing this in i have no interest whatsoever in reading this comic I have seen people do reviews for it online. I, I have no interest in reading it to do any review. And I would rec and, and I would advise anybody watching this, this video to, to, not, to not, 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 not even bother to waste your time with it either. It's garbage. It's utter garbage that, that they put together to spite Spider-Man and MJ once again in a story that nobody likes with weird art. It's ridiculous, it's stupid, and once again, they prove how much they pretty much hate Spider-Man and MJ being together, and that's all Marvel showing their hand at what they have set for everything. It's nonsense. Let me know in the comments what you think about this development. Um, if you think the story might be, um, you know, good if you think it's just another one of Marvel's blatant bullshit, fine. If you like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, ring the notification bell to be notified every time I put out a new video, and be sure to share the video out there. Let others know about it as much as possible. And I shall see you all next time. Take care.